Hey everybody, Spoonvet here, and as you can see, we are about to do Backtrack 5. Finally, uh, I think some of you might think. But, um, yeah, I've come, no, not to resent Backtrack 5, but and it, although it has a lot of tools, it's also missing a lot of stuff. And uh, things it's mostly missing is, I think, just drivers generally I mean um, if you got like a old computer backtrack 5 will work I think just fine like not too old but um, I think those drivers will have more or less well more chance to work than the new ones because I installed it on my computer and I had to do a whole lot of things to make it work so I'm not gonna use it anymore because uh, yeah got not in much trouble with it but what we are going to do is we're going to install it and show you what is well it, is, it has become a bit of a standard I mean a lot of stuff is compared to this one and uh, if you can make it work then it is a very good one well I don't need uh, actually I do need another one which is the dead keys Yeah, I used the entire disk. Well, um, there is one more security distro I'm gonna do, and then that segment is done uh, for now, at least. And we've covered, I think, a lot of ideas. Uh, I wanted to do one more, which is called Wi-Fi Slacks, but Wi-Fi Slacks is a Spanish distro. And since I don't speak, read, or know Spanish, it wouldn't be very helpful for me to show you. Uh, if you are Spanish, however, and you want a distro that's totally in Spanish, then go for Wi-Fi Slacks. It's Wi-Fi, uh, it's W-I-F-I, and then Slacks is S-L-A-X, uh, from song and um, you know you can download it and it has a lot of tools that are on here as well uh, there are also on, on this one but it's completely in Spanish uh, as you can see that the progress bar is going very quickly but since I've installed this one like already five times I know that's gonna hang like for I don't know 15 minutes on 99% so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video and then we'll continue on because then I can show you all the tools and and whatnot and as you can see I have no known version but it shouldn't surprise you anymore now and then I'm not gonna tell you anything about the latest or the the, the last version of last uh, distro I mean uh, because it's gonna be a surprise and then I have one more normal distro or normal between quotes distro that is out there it's pretty cool and furthermore we have some Diablo 2 footage of course like I said in Katana but I also have another Diablo surprise if I can make it work so just keep your fingers crossed and uh, maybe it's already online by the time this is online so yeah then it wouldn't be much of a surprise because you can see it. But anyway, all right. Um, just let this run. Also, if you're at home, and you think, oh, it's at 99% very quickly. Like I said, it's gonna stay there like for 15 to 20 minutes. So just let it run, and uh, it will continue saying almost finished copying files. So maybe backtrack. That's something you can work on as well as having. Um, well, uh, I. How you call that? Compatibility with like newer drivers or other drivers. Um, I had the I have the BCM forty four forty three or something like that driver. That's the one I needed, but I couldn't get it to work. Like even with my normal Ethernet uh, cable, I could not get Backtrack to work on internet. I had to do a lot of stuff with USB sticks and. God knows what else, or um, boot up Ubuntu and then you know in Ubuntu copy all the files that I needed to the backtrack this uh, partition and then boot back into backtrack execute the things it was 
horrendous to say the least. So um, no, I'm not hugely a fan of Backtrack, but I do think it's a good standard. I mean, they back, even back when it was KDE, the compatibility was better, but still, um, the tools that they had, they're so many. I mean, that's the basis. You know, they they cover all the bases, and that's something that's very important to do with. Um, being a security like focused distro we not only need to have stuff that can crack wireless but you also need to have stuff that can you know do some web ha application hacking and you need stuff that can crack files or um, do reverse engineering or what Metasploit is doing like really cracking computers getting back doors on them so you can extricate some uh, da data all of that Backtrack has the tools, but sometimes they're not even the latest version. They're not automatically updated. That's something else that they should implement. I mean, there's nothing worse than a security uh, uh, distro not being able to be updated to the latest version. Um, so yeah, so take all of that with you as well when we try to explore all the tools. Um, and for now, I will pause it for real because we're already at 99% so uh, I'll see you in a bit so here we are installation is finished we're gonna restart it and show you uh, some tools well all the tools I'm not gonna show you the tools but uh, show you what's on there <laughs> one thing that they did do uh, with the uh, backtrack 5 is they have a very nice uh, layout and good structured um, menu so you can find any, everything relatively easy <laughs> my cats are going well again oh you cannot see it right now but I log in as root which is normal password combination root and tor you should actually change that but I'm not gonna use it anyway so I'm not gonna change it well this one stays there uh, like this icon but we already have it installed they did not boot it from the uh, CD That uh, should be evident. Uh, let me see if I can get a better screen resolution. Ah, there we go. Alright, so we have accessories, but then we go into the backtrack menu. And as you can see, there are already a lot of options, like right from the start. Then we have information gathering, network analysis, and just look at all the tools that you have at your disposal for DNS, live host, uh, for uh, intrusion detection system you know, see what's on the network to see what traffic's doing um, operating systems oh, as Zint was, uh, I forgot that one I, I, I knew it but it just won't come into my mind see what um, tra what traffic is doing what kind of services are running or what kind of applications are running uh, SMB for network, uh, Windows network uh, mail uh, servers uh, SNMP is I think also network related as in see what's going on in network uh, other computers and stuff like that SSL for certificates um, this is for the like the dial-in ones um, well digital telephony or VoIP and uh, VPNs and that's just one and we have web applications this is also uh, some tools are like uh, in multiple uh, maps so but still uh, to see what kind of CMS is running see here's the same IES, IPS but this one is for web applications if they have it so and this is for the network if they have it so there that's why they're different um, like these do different things uh, then we have open source see what is all 
Uh, what's going on? A melt ego is, yeah, it's it can do a lot. So, and then we have some web crawlers to see what is on there. Then we have database. This one is actually the same as vulnerability assessment and I think an exploitation, but still. What kind of databases is on there for MS SQL, MySQL, and uh, MySQL only has a SQL map, so and Oracle has a lot of stuff on there. Um, then we have wireless to see what kind of Bluetooth uh, devices are in and what kind of wireless devices. Well, for vulnerability, we have Nessus, OpenVAS, uh, Saint is a new one, I don't know that one yet, so I have yet to try that one. And Mantra, Mantra is basically a Firefox, uh, but then built for pen testers. Network, the Cisco tools, um, the fuzzing of networks, uh, just the open source ones to see what, what kind of uh, open source vulnerabilities they are, and void to uh, mess around with that. Some web applications we have uh, here. This are a couple of the same ones that were in the information gathering. Here's this one is for uh, CMS vulnerabilities uh, to fuzz, but Deer Busters uh, like used for uh, getting to know if there are files on the database, stuff like that. Uh, proxies because Burp Suite and OWASP Zap are proxies for uh, like uh, testing uh, web applications. No, not proxies as in uh, getting a new IP and being safe. Uh, here again, you know the same tools, from, uh, mails, getting email addresses and stuff like that, and vulnerability scanners. There are loads of these, um, which uh, Nikto and Skipfish are very good uh, at what they do. Uh, Nessus is, as well, but Nessus is covered uh, separately in vulnerability scanners and database assessment like I said uh, here's the same and that was also where was it again information gathering database it's here vulnerability assessment database same tools uh, exploitation for the network some Cisco attacks fast track Metasploit uh, SAP and this one I don't know yet. Um, for the web applications, so to uh, like, well, get into um, how do you call it? Web applications, so sites or FTP or, or whatever, or database anyway. Again, the database, same tools. Uh, wireless, some Bluetooth hacking stuff, and of course the Aircrack Suite and Jerex and Free Radius and stuff like that. Here we have new segment uh, social engineering. So we have the beef uh, thing is in here, but beef is not the the old one, uh, as I should say, but it is the new one. And the new one is working with a different framework. I think it's Ruby based. And that was my cat just getting a wooden spoon. <laughs> it's trying to <laughs> it's trying to pick up and drag the wooden spoon. I have no idea why. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, honey pots to uh, get people to uh, well, basically log into your computer or log to network that you're making, uh, so you can get uh, like login details and search engineering toolkit. Uh, open source. This is for ex uh, just like browsing through the 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 vulnerabilities that are there that are out there. Um, privilege exclamation is password attacks uh, with uh, the help of your uh, video card or GPU. Uh, here they use OCL Hashcat, which or OCL Hashcat Plus, I should say, is the same uh, as like a pirate. So offline, and then those are attacks that you can like uh, execute here if you have whatever you need. So uh, in this case, like zip files or um, there's also one for uh, RAR files, but I think that's under forensics. Um, and online attacks for l online logins and stuff like that. Now we have VoIP tools, so you can uh, like hear the messages or crack VoIP accounts and stuff like that. Network sniffers to uh, we have the whole, uh, they don't have the whole suite of DSNF in there, so there's no I think SNARF uh, as, as Used to be URL snarf. Uh, what was the other one again? Message snarf and stuff like that. 
but they have to eat at the cap and ferret and stuff like that and poip knives spoofing attacks are basically um, making other people think that you are something else and same for VoIP and maintaining access here are the back doors for uh, getting a, a shell on there tunneling your shell basically tunneling means um, uh, you, you do it via a secure port so nobody can like listen in on your what you're doing and you're like separated from the rest of the uh, internet traffic as it were uh, and web backdoors for on uh, web applications so shells being the most uh, common one reverse engineering uh, so there are a lot of stuff in, on this one and Ollie uh, DBG is the one that I know and IDA Pro is one that I've used so and IDA Pro is really really like professional high grade stuff so. and there's a new section RFID uh, for the radio frequency uh, identifier and sadly I do not know much or uh, enough about this to tell you oh yeah this is a good like representation of tools or this is a bad one or there should be more I really don't know I have yet to really experiment with this one and this is something I really want to do because it's super interesting and well it's just cool um, so from the look of it it looks like there's a decent amount of tools on here uh, for RFID so um, once I get started with that uh, like here chip and pin info let's just start it let's see what it does okay there are a lot of errors <laughs> cool that's what I mean with back check there are a lot of errors no not to worry Okay, stress testing is uh, to see, well basically do a uh, like a denial service attack uh, to see how much uh, a server can handle and some people questioned whether this like should be on here or not well it's actually very good to have this on here because if the scope of a, net of a site is uh, to test the well everything on the site as in security DOS or DOS attacks are a real possibility so to include these tools in here I think is a really good good thing um, to make it but uh, the one thing that I miss is slow uh, Loris I think it's called uh, which well a lot of sites are impervious to it right now but there are still sites out there that can really um, like take a big hit if everybody's using it so maybe it should be in here maybe not I don't know uh, VoIP stress testing, which is basically, well, VoIP is going across the same line as your internet, so uh, you need about one uh, Mbit of upload, or sorry, uh, one Mbit of upload, that's normal, but one Mbit of download uh, as well, as if you have that at least, then VoIP will work, uh, if not, then it won't work. So it's very easy to, well, stress the digital telephony network, I think. And uh, this is uh, for stress testing WLAN, but I have no idea. I, I know the tool vaguely, but I cannot remember why. And I sure as hell cannot figure out why you should be stress testing your wireless router. I mean, yeah, you, you could send a massive amount of data to it. It will probably go down because it cannot handle them anymore. Right. Who knows? Then we get to the forensics section, which is well, pretty decent actually. Uh, you have some antivirus, uh, which is basically checking for rootkits. Um, TrueCrypt. I don't know why it's on the digital anti-forensics, but well, yeah, I have no idea why they put it on here. TrueCrypt. Basically, what it does is it makes a uh, separate hidden partition which is encrypted with a password that should be at least like 34 30 characters long and all kinds of weird random numbers and characters and you can store data in that and you cannot access it from the outside uh, digital foren forensics is just a hacks editor so it sounds pretty impressive digital forensics and 
Doesn't matter. Uh, stack the deck. And Veneto is something I know, but the ra yeah, and this is also what I know for uh, metadata uh, out of pictures, which is pretty cool. Uh, forensic carving is basically, um, yeah, how do you explain that? Uh, to look into what kind of files are deleted on the system and stuff like that. And uh, usually you can get a lot of stuff out of that. Forensic hashing, just to um, make hashes, that's it. Forensic imaging is making an image uh, that is a secure copy, if you would, uh, or snapshot of the hard disk drive without playing with the hard disk. So you copy the hard disk and then you can do it uh, and, and like experiment with that image to your heart's content without making um, changes to the physical hard drive. So that's pretty cool. Uh, sweets, uh, I've already talked about it, I think in Kane there was Autopsy or Sleuth Kit, the same, and PTK, I have no idea. Network Forensics, which is uh, basically some of the same tools that are already up there, is uh, just getting what's going around the network. Some passwords uh, to like break or crack passwords that are on the computer. Like you have an image of a um, well Windows XP or Windows Vista, you dump the SAM, which is the uh, the file that holds the passwords, and then try to crack those passwords so you can log in and stuff like that. PDF, uh, which is uh, getting uh, metadata from PDF files, and RAM is the um, the memory that was on there. You can get a lot of data out of memory actually. Uh, if the computer is running, let's say. Uh, you caught a criminal or you try to hack into a computer that's still running if you run this there's a lot of data being held in the memory and you can extract that with it, with these tools uh, this is for reporting so um, this is for recording your desktop to uh, show whoever you're gonna do the penetration testing for that you really did what you what you did um, what you say, said you did, and this is for like, con yeah, making sure your everything that you find is in a orderly fashion. Services, uh, no idea what GPSD is. I uh, really don't. Uh, HTTPD is the HTTP daemon, so starting so you can run a site like Apache basically. Uh, MySQL database, no idea. Snort is a IDS intrusion detection system, and SSH is well SSH, so it's secure shell. So I don't know this one and this one. Uh, maybe people out there can uh, just drop a comment and say this is for this and this is for that. I think this is for GPS, uh, as in uh, really GPS, so making you a geo-targeting uh, demon, so you can, I don't know, like for war driving, stuff like that, and PCSC, I have no idea. And miscellaneous stuff that could not be anywhere else is Mac Changer, usually. Um, IP calculations, web, poncha, I have no idea what it has, and WFuzz, and KeepNote. But KeepNote is also in here. So that's what I said. Some are double, some are um, once, some are not even included, I think. They are only like on the actual hard disk. Um, well, that's Backtrack 5 GNOME Edition. Um, there's not much else I can say, but it is a good standard. It has a lot of tools, but it also lacks a lot of, uh, well, co cohesion, I think is the correct word. Uh, so maybe they can work on that, but the other thing I have to hand them to them, this is like the first time they did GNOME. So maybe the KDE version is like totally correct and the GNOME version is totally messed up. I haven't had yet the chance to test it out with Backtrack 5, so because I hate KDE. But if people uh, know this, then uh, well, go ahead, drop comments for that, as well as uh, for the PC. Uh, what was it? P PS PCSC Demon. And otherwise, just have fun with Backtrack if you get it to work finally. And I'll take care and I'll see you next time.